Hello everyone and welcome to Clay Formations. Who says you can't celebrate Halloween in the summertime? Not me. I'm going to do it. What better way to celebrate Halloween in the summertime than making Jack Skellington? But I'm going to make him a little more dapper, so we'll call him Dapper Jack. And as usual, we'll begin our sculpture with the base. I've always got to start with the base. If I don't, I usually end up painting myself into a corner and not being able to match up the sculpture that I made with a base. Here I'm using baking soda and very thin super glue to glue the wire to the base. It's really, really strong. And it's also instant. I don't have to wait for it to cure or dry. Bending him into the correct pose. Now we'll take some magic sculpt to make his upper torso and shoulders. Now to shape out his shoulders. Wait a minute, that doesn't look like shoulders, that looks like a butt. <laughs> uh, sorry about that. <laughs> Let's uh, keep going. Now we'll take some tin foil and wrap it around his neck to give the clay something to bite onto. Make sure it's nice and tight so it won't slip. Then we'll cover it in liquid Sculpey and begin to add the clay. We call this the blocking in phase, where you don't worry about detail, you just block out all the major shapes making sure all the proportions and symmetry are correct. Not the most fun part of the sculpture, but it is absolutely necessary. Now we'll coat the wooden ball with some liquid Sculpey so the clay will stick. I wish I would have used aluminum foil because he ended up having a little bit of a bubble on the side of his head. You'll probably notice it later on. There we go, he's all covered in clay. Now we'll block out his neck. Now we'll make our markers where the eyes, nose, and mouth will go. I really wish I was a little better at blocking things out. I usually don't get it the first time, or the second time, or the third time. <laughs> it just takes me a a while to get it uh, proportioned right. As you can see, I just keep trying until I get the proportions right. I have to add and take away, and shape and squeeze and pinch until I get it to a form that I like. And right now we're starting to get there. Now we can start working on the details. Really wasn't sure how I wanted the eye sockets to be. I didn't know if I wanted them to be circular or if I wanted to go from top to bottom like streaks. I think I ended up going with the circular pattern. A little more raking. Now it's really starting to take shape with a little bit of a eyebrow scowl.
marking out the smile line. And now to work on his nose. Now we'll pick his nose. really starting to come together now. Blend some of these areas in. Right about now is when you can start adding the finer details. You see there's that circular pattern I was talking about. start adding some bone texture to his skull with the pore tool. And hours later I'm still adding texture to the skull. But the results you achieve are worth the time you put into it. Now we'll mark out where his teeth are going to go. And no I am not going to do it detailed. I'm going to do it just like the character is in the movie. Now I'm going to mark out all the sections of his vertebrae and then we'll add in the details. Is it vertebra or vertebrae? I don't know. Let me know in the comments which one it is. started out with a wide tool and then I had to grab some smaller tools as I went up. Here I'm making the discs that go between the bones. That's the squishy part between your bones that allows you to move your neck all over the place. blend everything in and give it a little bit of texture. And add a little more refinements to his teeth before we send him to the oven. All right, Jack, let's take you to the oven. Now let's make his famous tie. I decided to use cosplay to reduce the risk of it breaking after it was baked. And I have no plan here, I'm just sort of making shapes and hoping that it turns out okay. In order to do the other side, I decided to use what I had already made and just cut it out and make a copy of the other side. Using my infamous pie plate, I'll add some details. Oh, that looks about right. And realizing that I goofed and I have to make this one piece, I had to use wire, UV resin, and clay to make it one complete piece. Now for the controversial trivia question of this sculpt, and letting me know what the tie actually is. Is it a cat with bat wings, or is it a bat with a cat face? Please put this controversy to rest and let me know in the comments what it actually is. But for now, I'm just making the best bat face that I can.
All right, let's take Jack out of the oven. Now to make his tuxedo. I'm not exactly sure what kind of tuxedo shirt this is. It's the kind of collar that has the two little corners that stick out and then you see the bow tie going all the way around the neck. I thought that might be kind of cool. Adding the little bow tie strap. tuxedo lapels. Now we'll refine everything, blend it in, give it some texture, and cure it with the heat gun. Now it's time to give Dapper Jack a coat of paint. Ooh, very nice. Now I'll give his tuxedo jacket a coat of black paint. Trying real hard not to get the black paint on the parts that are supposed to remain white. I'm going to use some black pastel powder to create a shadow between his neck and his collar. I thought giving his lapels a coat of color shift black paint would give it a nice little sheen. Now I'll paint some details on his neck. Adding some shadows to the vertebrae with some black pastel powder. I ended up having to do a whitewash over all of this because it was just a little bit too harsh. Now we'll paint his tie. After this is all painted and dry, we'll attach it to his collar. I wanted the base to have that classic Tim Burton look with the black and white stripes. I thought that would kind of tie it all together. The difficult part is getting nice clean lines. Until I get here and I don't have to worry about the clean lines anymore. Now I'm going to try something new, Mosu Black Paint. This paint is supposed to absorb 98% of reflected light, and I was thoroughly impressed. This stuff really works. You paint this stuff on, and literally the light just disappears. If you really need a high contrast within your pieces, this stuff really works well. Highly recommend. See how the light just disappears? Isn't that amazing? So what you can do is you can overpaint in an area. This is the clean side, and this is the messy side. Then you can clean up all the rough edges and you have a nice clean look. You are looking quite dapper, Jack.
All right, if you've made it this far, you are a rock star. Thank you so much for watching. I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. If you think I deserve it, give this video a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more, please consider subscribing. And if you'd like to see another video, right up there in the right hand corner, you can see a video called The Sword and the Crescent Moon. And as always, a big thank you to my subscribers. I can't tell you how much I appreciate your support. Take care, and we'll see you next time.